What's up, guys? I just thought maybe I would throw together a video real quick. I had some thoughts on my heart. If you're curious about the beard, I figured every man should grow one at least one time in his life. I've come too far to look back now. I'm about tired of having it. But I'm riding with it, I think. I'm going to see what that looks like here in a couple months. I might give up, but I hope not to give up. Last time I gave up, I felt bad for shaving it, so I'm just going to ride it out. It looks kind of silly and it feels terrible, but like I said, just one time in my life, I'd like to see what it's like to have one. So at work today, a guy's singing Reckless Love all day long, over and over, all day long. And it's somewhat exhausting. And I bring that up, though, because that song has been the root of a lot of controversy and People have different perspectives as to what he's trying to say, the writer of the song, in regards to the reckless love of God. I've heard a few different angles. People say nothing about God is reckless, and I get where they're coming from. But I think what the writer's trying to say is that really the love of God is recklessly abandoned. I feel the spirit of the Lord in that. Meaning that he doesn't take suggestions from the circumstances of life before he decides whether or not he's gonna love you. He doesn't look at your race, your creed, your background, your struggle, your sin, or anything of that sort, and determine whether or not he's gonna pursue you. <laughs> that the love of God is real. And I say that knowing this, that before I got saved, I was putting guns to folks' heads, robbing every store and home in town, selling dope and getting high and I've done a lot of time and God came to me I wasn't seeking God he sought me out he left the 99 to find the one and he sought me out and there wasn't nothing that was going to stand in the way of the will of God nothing can thwart the will of God as it would say in the scriptures and he came and he pursued me he kicked down walls no darkness could prevent what he had purposed in his heart to do. And I can attest to this, a person that used to blaspheme his name and shake a fist at heaven and spit on everything holy in my wickedness. That when God came to me, he didn't address my sins and want to discuss how wicked I had been. He didn't want to raise up any of those points and hold them against me. What he did was come to me in nothing but pure, pure mercy. The Bible says it's the goodness of God that, drew, that draws a man to repentance. A man, the goodness of God came to me that day and broke the chains of bondage and set me free and put me at liberty. Who the sun sets free is free indeed. And the love of God has been able to sustain me. And I'm going to be transparent enough to tell you this, that after getting saved, there's been some valleys there's been some seasons that I'm not proud of. There's been some things that shown themselves in my life that I thought I would never see again after getting saved. Things that I'm ashamed of. And I'm thinking, how in the world did I ever get to this place? But what I do know is that through those trials and through those foolish things that I have done, that all the while I've had an anchor sure and steadfast for my soul that enters in behind the veil. His name is Jesus. All the while... The wise builder who began a work in me fully intended to finish because you can't tell me that on judgment day somebody's going to stand before Christ and say look at the work you began in him and couldn't finish did you not count the cost when you began to work in him knowing that you wouldn't be able to complete it that's not going to happen folks all the while he knew that when the enemy was coming against me and the things that I was facing and my backslidings and all the stupid things that I've done even as a believer that he was going to bring me through it. Even when I wasn't so sure, he was going to bring me through it. And I'm telling you that through these trials and through these struggles, I've learned the love of God. Had it not been for the valleys and the dark places, I wouldn't know the love of God for what it is. You can't tell me that anything could prevent the love of God from pursuing one that he laid his life down for. You can't tell me that he's going to give up on somebody that he's bought with the price. You can't tell me he's going to do that man I've been so nasty on too many occasions 
and I am not one that's going to condone and, and justify sin in somebody's life. We've absolutely got to take up our cross and live a life in holiness unto the Lord who is worthy. We've got to deny ourselves and take up our cross daily and follow Him and put away the works of the flesh, mortifying the deeds of the flesh by the Spirit. We've absolutely got to do that. There's no way around it. But I say all that to say this, that at the end of the day, if not for the love of God, there would be nothing else to say about my salvation because God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever would believe in Him would not perish but have everlasting life because folks, the truth of the matter is this, that God did not send His Son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through Him might be saved. The love of God, you can call it what you want to, but in a lot of respects it is reckless that there's nothing that's going to stand in the way of the love of God prevailing. There's nothing, no height, no breadth, no depth, no length, no principality, no devil that's going to separate me from the love of God today. And I'm telling you, wherever you are right now, there might be some things that you're facing. There might be some things that you're going through. But if you've been bought with the price, that if you belong to the Lamb of God this day, you better know that He's holding fast to you. Don't give up on your faith. Don't let the devil talk you out of standing with Christ. Endure unto the end. The Bible says in the book of James that the, that the Lord has a crown of life laid up for those who endure temptation. Endure temptation as a good soldier of the Lord. And there's a crown of life waiting for you. The Bible says those that overcome shall be sons of God and he will be their God and we will be his son and we will sit with him on his throne even as Christ has sat down with the Father on his throne and we will inherit all things and we will be a pillar in the temple of God and we will eat of the hidden manna and the tree of life and he will write upon us a new name and we will never go out from his presence again. We will abide with him and I'm telling you, you've got hope in Jesus. There is therefore now no condemnation nation for you if you are in Christ look unto him trust in him his love is pure and it is real and it will not fail you in Jesus name